Hey all, Tom Ryan here from Tom's Big Spiders. On a recent podcast, I actually went through and tried to figure out my top 15 favorite spiders or tarantulas in my collection. Not necessarily favorite species, but those individual spiders I love. And I realized this time around, I had several small or dwarf species on the list. I think a lot of this, when we first get into the hobby, we tend to ignore the smaller ones. I know I did. My theory was if I was going to get into a hobby that involved keeping large, giant arachnids, I wanted the biggest ones I could find. And so as a result, I kind of ignored some of the smaller species. Well, now that I've obviously been in the hobby for a while. I've tracked down some of these smaller species and I absolutely adore them. So we're going to be taking a look at one of those smaller species here. I have my Segnoctimus brachyromosa or Malaysian blue femur. I have two little slings. Well, they're kind of juveniles now that need a rehousing. This is an awesome little species. I actually had one before and you'll hear about that in the video. These two guys are growing up. They're healthy. They're looking great. and It's time to get them a bigger home. The P. brachyromosa or Malaysian blue femur is an old world species from Malaysia. It's a dwarf fossorial species, meaning it's very small and they like to dig. Females reach three plus inches or so. They are very shy and very fast, but they would rather hide in burrows than stand and fight. So this is one of those species you want to make sure when you set them up, you give them that room to dig and burrow so they can feel secure. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at my P. brachyromosa or Malaysian blue femur. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Sednocnemus brachyromosa. I have two slings that I got from Aaron Cashel back in oh, June of 2022. At that time, they were about a half inch at three quarters inches or so. And I'll so show some of the old rehousing footage here. This is from the Ephibopus party pack video. I got, I got a bunch of Ephibopus or Ephibopus species, which are growing up and we're going to be doing a rehousing probably within the next couple months or so. But I also got these two little gems. Now, I actually had one in the past that I was raising up. And for folks who think that feeders can't harm the spiders, back, uh, God, what was it, about two years ago or so, I had one that I went to feed. Its burrow was open. I dropped a small cricket in. It, I thought it grabbed the cricket. The cricket was gone. Well, apparently it had been molting. It was a mature male. And when I came back the next day to check on it, the spider had dragged itself out of its burrow and the cricket was sitting on top of it, chewing off its legs. So it chewed off several of its legs. It did not make it. It was dead. And I was heartbroken because I'd never had that happen before. And usually when you have the fossorial species, they close off their burrows before they molt, which keeps the crickets from getting down or any of the prey items from getting down into it. So it was really horrific to see, but a reminder that we need to be careful that the feeder insects can and will feed on them if given the opportunity. So these two here, I caught one of them out the other day. They've definitely outgrown these little enclosures that I have in here. I have them originally in dram vials, and what I did was set them up with about an inch and a half or so of moist substrate. I think I put a little dollop of sphagnum moss on the top, which they quickly buried when they, oh, there it is right up there. It's right up on the top. So, ah, so these might be a little overkill for them. They're a little smaller than I thought they were going to be. But they buried all the way down, or bur burrowed all the way down to the bottom. They, as you can see here, there's like this Swiss cheese type burrow going all the way around. And they've since then outgrown these. What we're going to put them in is the Sterilite Latch Top, I think they're called. I'll put the dimensions up. But they're around, I don't know, six inches or so tall by about six or so inches this way and about five or so inches that way. I'm sure I'm probably not exactly right. But again, I'll put the little graphic up showing. But I love these for juveniles and larger slings. I have a lot. I think I have, oh God, if I'm looking over, probably about 15 of them, 16 of them in use right now. So again, like the Sterilite, they're a little more milky, but this isn't something that I would keep a beautiful showcase spider. And this is for juveniles that are probably going to outgrow this in a little bit. So what we're going to try to do is I'm going to get one of these out of the way. We're going to try to get one of the spiders out so we can see it. I have the wadded up pieces of paper towel in the corners here because this is a very fast and shy species. I got a funny feeling if it gets out in the open, it's going to bolt. So what we hope will happen is if it bolts, it'll run around. It'll end up underneath one of these, which will allow us to get it up and cup it. And hopefully, now that I'm looking at the holes in this, hopefully the holes in this are big enough to permit it to escape. This is going to be interesting. I have another catch up we can use if it comes down to it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to get this one open first. So hopefully Billy can get a shit now right back down in there. I don't know if you can see it in there. Uh, kind of. So what I'm going to try to do is drag the whole thing out. Oh. Oh. I don't know if you can get a little shot of it. Oh. Put a little 
Section 99. Not quite as big. One of them was up near the top. All I could see is its legs, and it looked like it was like two inches. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's vastly outgrown this thing. Now that I'm looking at it, it's not that bad. So the containers I have put, I'm putting them into a little bit larger than I would normally use for a species this size. But I did after I got a little, I had these filled up a little further up. I don't want this thing to bury itself. I've had uh, fossorial species go in, and if you give them too much substrate, they get all the way down to the bottom, they fill up their den, and they expect prey to come to them. And of course, we put stuff that goes around the top. They won't necessarily come up to eat it, and I've had that issue before. So I'm trying not to give this one enough room to bury itself. Oh, there it is. All right. All right, a little longer than I thought, I think. Let's see if I can't get this one maybe right into the enclosure. And these guys turn into a, well, females have a beautiful blue coloration on their femurs. They're gorgeous spiders. This is an old world species. So a bite would not be pleasant. Every time I mention that, people freak out over it. But I mean, the trick is you just don't get bitten. It's not inevitable. Um, if you'd sit right on that sphagnum moss there, it'd be amazing. Please just stay there. Please just stay there. All right. Really wants to get a shot of it because it's probably the most footage I'll get till next. All right. This one's probably pushing about an inch and a half or so, I would say. Is it coming out all right? Whoop. 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 Gorgeous little spider. All right, so it's going to start on there. So what I'm hoping will happen is later on it'll gravitate out. I've created a little starter burrow in here. What we have for the setup is a mixture of peat, cocoa fire, fiber, sand, and some shredded uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss. And then we pack that down. Moist substrate for these guys. Moist substrate through their whole life cycle. Piece of cork bark hide. Starter burrow that goes down here. I'm hoping later on she'll go out and find that starter burrow and go in there. A little leaf litter because I found that some of the burrowing species will incorporate a little of that leaf litter in there and it just looks nice. And a water dish. We just went through the whole water dish debate again. So I am putting the water dish in ahead of time now because I have a lot of people don't see me put the water dish in and think that I didn't put one in. And then we're just going to go. I don't know if that's coming out. A little ASMR there for people who like the water stuff. I don't get it, but <laughs> each is their own, whatever. Um, all right, so I'm going to move this one out of the way, get the other one, which I think might be the bigger one. This one, same setup, a little deeper water dish, but it was only because that was the only cap I had. And this one might be a little trickier because I haven't seen this one on the surface very much. Oh, oh. Let me see if I can get... Probably not the easiest for you to get a shot of, but let me pull it out. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. That ain't gonna work. Hmm. There we go. All right, actually, this one looks a little bit smaller, perhaps. I can't tell. It's all in a stress pose. This is when they pull their knees up over their carapace, try to guard it. Maybe about the same size or so. So I think these enclosures will be fine. Let's see if we can get this one to come out and pose for us. And it's going like she has a little booty in there. So all Billy gets a shot of just the tip of this one's abdomen, spinnerets. Some notes on these guys. When I picked these up, I was in the new house. So temperatures in the summertime are the high 70s, 80, low 80s or so. In the wintertime here, we keep it right around 73 degrees, but that means lower shelves are a little cooler. 
the top shelves are a little warmer. So this one's usually a top shelf spider or has been a top shelf spider where it's about 75 degrees most of the winter. It does dip down a little bit lower than that on occasion, but they do just fine. Again, moist substrate through the entire life cycle. They've been awesome eaters. Even when they were little teeny ones, I was dropping in little red runner roach nymphs and they were gobbling them up. No problem. These have always been great eaters. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to get them out of these tiny enclosures because feeding them. I had one of them the other day. I popped the top. I went to drop a prey at them in the prey and went to go up over the corner and it almost came out of the enclosure trying to grab it. And it basically jumped out, grabbed it and went back in. I'm like, all right, we need to get those out of there. This will give it more room to actually hunt. And then as far as feeding, when they were teeny tiny slings, I usually feed them twice a week or so or every three days, every three or four days around there. And again, trying to grow them out of that sling stage more quickly. Growth, well, they look like they're about, what would you say, about inch and three quarters, inch and a half or so around there. When we got them, they were about, an, I would say, uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. So slower growth rate overall. But I will say the last one I had, the one that was a mature male that, uh, that sadly got eaten by the cricket, that one grew fairly quickly too. I think it matured out, I want to say, in about 16 months or so. So, and I know that males, there is sexual dimorphism between the males and females. Males get more of a black coloration on their females uh, than the females on their femurs, and they tend to be a lot smaller. The females tend to be obviously larger and have that blue, but uh, growth rate, fairly good overall. I'm trying to think, am I missing anything? Oh, hold on. As far as temperament's concerned, these guys are, I've heard a lot of people say they can be pet holes, which means they will burrow. They will stay in their burrows. What I found with my male is that he burrowed and then he webbed up around the opening. I've heard other people say the same thing and that sometimes you can catch them out in the opening waiting, the little legs hanging out. But overall, you won't be seeing them all that much. But again, with the fossorial species, the reason why those of us who like fossorial species like them is when you do see them, it's an event and it makes it all worthwhile. So there we go. The P. brachyromosa, or Malaysian blue femur. Awesome little spiders. This is a smaller species. I believe females get to be like four inches or so, so it's a smaller species, but definitely something to check out for folks that are looking for a, you know, old world species with a little bit of blue. So again, when setting up fossorial species, especially slings or smaller juveniles, you want to make sure you don't overdo it with the depth of substrate. I know we read a lot of stuff saying that they live in deep burrows in the wild, but one thing we don't take into account is in the wild, some of these guys will run into prey items in their burrows. So they will encounter things like grubs and earthworms and even species of crickets and other insects that so they don't even have to service. So I have run into issues before where I've taken these fossorial slings, put them in five or six inches of substrate, and I've had them dig all the way down to the bottom, close it up and not eat, even when it's obvious the spider's getting skinny and is hungry. So that's something to always keep track of and I'll be keeping track of it with these guys. So that will do it with this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate Click the little circle up in there. I'll put two other videos for people to check out here in case you want to see what else I do. As always, you take the time to comment. I will take the time to respond. It just may take me a couple days because I tend to get busy and get a lot of comments. As always, guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.